And that is our theme for this month. Uh, we'll continue our study this afternoon on uh, radical stewardship. But before we go into that, uh, let me just mention that yung special envelopes po na nakikita nyo na bago, yung brown envelope, kahit is namin ni Brother Daddy, that's intended for our uh, fundraising for our church anniversary and our Christmas presentation. Usually, uh, yan po ang pinakamalaking bulk na ating expenses all throughout the year. Yung ating uh, December event and January January event, namely yung Christmas kantata natin and yung church uh, anniversary natin. Uh, continue to pray for our uh, funds as a church. Our average uh, uh, expenses monthly for this year, 2016, is 22,000 dirhams a month. That's our average uh, expenses in order to sustain uh, the ministry. And so far, our average giving po natin monthly ay 20,000. Okay, so uh, our prayer natin is that uh, we'll be able to have at least three to four months of backup funds uh, para hindi tayo medyo kumbaga lalong sa ating finances. So pray for that. If the trend continues, then most probably by before this year ends, I uh, medyo madidrain na yung ating finances. But we don't worry about it. Amen? Amen? Because our God is a faithful God. He supplies our every need. Amen. And this is the work of the Lord. It's the ministry of the Lord. And the Lord will never fail to provide for the needs of His ministry. Amen? Amen. Uh, we have proven that for so many years. Even when we started the ministry here in Dubai, the Lord has never failed to supply our every need. Even to the point na minsan akala na namin, akala natin medyo wala na, pero miraculously the Lord will work and the Lord will provide our needs. So, continue to pray, okay? And continue to, for me, I'm excited every time this happens. You know why? Because when the Lord provides our needs, when there's a need, the Lord will provide the need, right? And when the Lord provide the and when the Lord would provide the needs for the ministry, you know what He would do? He would bless you, right? Because that's how God provides for His church through His church, right? So when there's a need, okay, pupunuan niya ng Panginoon, pero paano yung pupunuan ng Panginoon? Ibig bless niya yung mga anak niya, okay? Para mapunuan yung pangailangan. Kaya for me, I'm excited to see how the Lord will uh, supply our needs for the church because I'm excited to see how the Lord will bless all of us. Amen? Amen. Do you want God to bless you? Amen. Ah, ayaw nyo ata eh. Parang ayaw nyo ata. Sinong gusto ng blessing? Okay, labas yung panyo. Okay. <laughs> Alright. So, uh, yun yung ano, ah, yun, yung, yun yung exciting patungkol sa Panginoon. But of course, the secret to receiving God's blessing is for us to become good and faithful stewards. Amen? When you are faithful with little, then the Lord will bless you with more because He knows that you would be faithful with much as well. So, the key pa rin, bottom line, is our faithfulness when it comes to our stewardship. Okay? So, uh, that's what we emphasized last week. Uh, we talked about the relationship between discipleship and stewardship, and we said that true discipleship of Jesus Christ, a true disciple of Jesus Christ, is a good and faithful steward of Christ. Okay. We looked into Matthew chapter 25, the parable of the talents, and I emphasized last week that a true servant, not just a professing servant, but a true servant, uh, a person, uh, a person with a true heart of a servant will desire to please his master. Okay? Ang totoong tao na may servant heart, ang pinaka-goal niya, ang pinaka-aim niya is to please his master. That's his resolution as a servant. To, to make sure that his master would be happy by managing well the resources that the master has entrusted to him. That's why I said, a true servant is faithful, loyal, and committed to his master. So if we apply in our Christian life, if we say that we are followers of Christ, we will remain faithful, loyal, and committed sa ating Panginoon. And if we have that true servant's heart as followers of Jesus Christ, 
makikita natin sa sarili natin na ang, ang goal natin is to please our master. To make sure that God is happy. To make sure that God is glorified okay, through our stewardship. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, the moment God entrusts to us a blessing, okay, sabi na sa kanta, we seek first His face, not our hand. Paano yun? Pag nakatanggap tayo ng blessing, ano sasabihin? Lord, thank you for this blessing. I praise you and glorify you because you are the source of this blessing. Lord, why did you entrust to me this blessing? It's not just for us to enjoy the blessings. That's part of it, of course. Okay, But there's a purpose, noble purpose behind that. So don't just think about how you can use that blessing for yourself, but how you can use that blessing so that the Father would be glorified and magnified. Okay? So when we talk about stewardship, remember, it's not just about money. Okay? It, 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 it encompasses all the areas of our life. Although money has a great portion, great part as far as stewardship is concerned. As a matter of fact, if you look, if you look into the scriptures, the Lord Jesus Christ addressed much when it comes to money. Talk much about money. Okay, why? Because where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. Also, okay? So it's not just about money, but it includes everything that the Lord has entrusted to us. Your job, your relationships, your profession, your privileges, even our bodies, our life, our health. It's not ours. If you, the reason why you're here today and you're alive is because God has entrusted to you one more day. Right? Amen. We live one day at a time. So kung pinahiram lang ng Panginoon yung buhay natin ngayon, dapat magpasalamat tayo sa Panginoon, right? And we must make sure that we would use this life, this day, to make sure that God will be glorified in us and through us. Okay, so it's not just even the tangibles, even it includes the intangible, not just the physical, but most of all, <clears throat> the spiritual. Okay? Kanina nga, nung nagpe-prepare ako, sabi ko, ano ba yung mga practical na uh, areas ng stewardship? Minsan, pag, minsan, pagbukas ko ng, ano yung tawag na, yung aparador, Kaya minsan doon din, makikita mo kung naging good and faithful stewards tayo ng Panginoon. Tama? Minsan yung iba sa atin, parang kulang ang sampung aparador pagdating sa gamit at sa sapato sa damit. No? Pero ang ginagamit lang naman natin, kada linggo yung pagulito natin, pagulit-ulit lang naman. Di ba? So, every aspect of our lives, even the most simple things in life, we need to be good and faithful stewards. Remember, Sabi, sabi, paulit-ulit natin sila sabi, everything that we have in this world is not ours. Do you believe in that? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Sweet talaga ni Roy, na? Hindi ba talaga ikaw yung nasa akin? <laughs> okay. Alright? Why? Because Job said, if you look at Job 1.21, Job said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Wala ang sino man sa atin ang may dinala dito sa mundo. Tama? Sino sa inyong pinahanap na kaluwi dito na na bag na, nakakabit nga. Okay? O kaya naka, ano ba, Nike shoes. Diba? Wala, di ba? We came into this world naked. And the Bible says we would leave this world naked. So everything that we have is not ours, but it's the Lord's. The Bible says in Deuteronomy, even the power and the strength, the ability to accumulate wealth is from the Lord. So walang sino man ang pwede magsabi na, ito ay sa akin. In, in a sense, yes, but it's not ultimately ours, it's the Lord's. It was simply entrusted to us. Okay? Sabihin niyo sa katabi niyo, we are stewards. We are stewards. 
Okay, so that's what we focused on last week. Uh, we focused on the intention of a good and faithful steward. The intention of a good and faithful steward is this. He will always please his master. So when his master entrusts to him something, he will take it as an opportunity to show his love, his loyalty, his faithfulness, and his commitment to his master. Now in ngayon hapon na to, we would look at uh, the issue of being in being a good and faithful uh, servant. Okay? Um, let us further reinforce the point of uh, the resolution of a good servant by looking into a parable in uh, Luke chapter 16. If you have your Bibles, open it to Luke chapter number 16, and we will look into another parable this afternoon. Okay? But although we would not in really look into the parable, but I would just give the background, the, the summary, so that you would have an idea. Okay? If you go to Luke chapter number 16, from verses 1 to 9, you would see the parable of the dishonest manager. Okay? This is another parable Jesus uh, shared to his disciples. Now, we don't have time to look into the details of this, but if you want to really know what the parable is all about, go to our YouTube page, uh, look for the sermon dated September 2014 entitled uh, Stewardship Maximizing God's Resources for His Glory. Okay? Uh, may isang sermon doon na pinag-aralan natin to. Okay? But just giving you the summary, the brief summary of this parable, Jesus is telling us that as believers, we need to be shrewd. Okay? Or another word for shrewd is wise. Dapat maging matalino tayo when it comes to taking care of managing our resources, and preparing for the future. Okay? Um, if you look at the parable, I, uh, it seems that Jesus is commending the dishonest manager. But the focus there is not the dishonesty of the manager. But the focus is on the shrewdness, how he is wise in preparing for his future. Okay, I remember there's a preaching uh, on this text entitled "A Good Example," uh, a good lesson from a bad example. Okay, ang pinaka point ni Jesus dito is dapat tayo mga Kristiano marunong tayo, matalino tayo, and we must prepare for our future. If unbelievers prepare for their future, much more we. That's part of good stewardship. Okay. And yung future na binabanggit ko, it's not our retirement. Okay? Although you can prepare for that, that's also part of good stewardship. But our future is eternity. Right? So as believers, we need to prepare for eternity. And we need to be wise. We need to be shrewd while we are here on earth. Because the moment we leave earth, wala na tayong opportunity to invest and prepare for our eternity. So, ang sinasabi ni Jesus Christ dito, be wise. Okay, that's the point that Jesus is making here. I've said last time, we Christians need to learn to be wise in the affairs of this world and be more diligent in using and maximizing our God-given resources here on earth in order to make investments that will have eternal significance, value, and rewards. Okay, so, we need to be why? Why? That's what this parable is all about. Now, I would like for us to look into the following verses after the parable um, that Jesus mentioned in verses 10 to 13. Okay? Luke chapter number 16, verses 10 to 13. Lord Jesus Christ said, One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much, and one who is dishonest in a very little is dishonest in much. If then you have not been faithful in their unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. So the question that we'll try to answer this morning is this. How do we become good and faithful stewards? What is the main issue when it comes to stewardship? Although there's a lot of issues that dapat natin isetel, uh, when it comes to stewardship or when we talk about stewardship, but the main issue that we need to deal with or settle 
so that we can be good and faithful stewards, okay, is the issue of faithfulness. Okay? The word faithful was mentioned there a couple of times. I think four times, right? The issue of faithfulness. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses two, verse 2 says, Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found faithful. Okay? It is required of stewards that they be found faithful. So in other words, tayo ay stewards ng Panginoon. And since God, Jesus Christ, is our master, He expects us to be faithful stewards. May pinagkatiwala sa atin ng Panginoon. And napakaraming blessings sa pinagkatiwala sa atin ng Panginoon. Amen? Amen? We are blessed, not just materially, not just physically, but most of all spiritually. I said earlier in our devotion, uh, if you consider the spiritual blessings that we have, binasa ni Brother Joy, Ephesians 1 verse 3, right? That God has bestowed upon us through Jesus Christ, napaka grabe, napaka lawak yung blessing na pinagaloob sa atin ng, ng ating Panginoon. So, since God has entrusted to us these blessings, then He also expects us to be faithful stewards of these blessings, both materially, physically, and most of all, uh, spiritually. Okay? We must be faithful stewards. Can you say that to the person beside you? We must be faithful stewards. <laughs> now, how do we become faithful stewards? Okay? Uh, going back to Luke chapter 16, verse 13, there are a couple of other small issues that we can see here. Uh, that needs to be settled so that we can become good and faithful steward and settle that main issue, the issue of faithfulness. Okay? Number one, look at verse number 10. It says there, One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much, and one who is dishonest in very little is also dishonest in much. Anong ibig sabihin ng verse? Para anong sinasabi dito ng ating Panginoon? Okay? In other words, what Jesus is saying is that faithfulness in stewardship has nothing to do with whether you have little or much. Right? Faithfulness in stewardship does not depend on whether you have little or much. Okay. What is the issue there? Okay. Faithfulness is a character issue. Okay? Faithfulness is a character issue. In other words, circumstances or the amount of resources that we have do not determine our faithfulness. Circumstances do not determine our faithfulness. Have you, have you heard Christians say, if only I had more, then I can be faithful in giving my tithes. Narinig niyo na ba yan? Kung, kung mas marami lang blessings ako matanggap sa Panginoon, then I will be faithful in my giving sa etc. etc. Sa ministry ng Panginoon. Okay? If God would bless me more, then I will be faithful in giving. Probably we have said that ourselves, right? If we would be honest enough, okay? I've, I've, I've said that to the Lord myself. Lord, bless mo ako para mas marami akong may bigay. Totoo yun. Pero, Minsan, makakalimutan natin, nagpo-focus tayo sa amount ng resources. Na nakakalimutan natin, whether we have little or much, what God wants from us is to be faithful. Don't wait till you have much for you to be faithful. As a matter of fact, the Lord will not entrust you much because He knows that He cannot what? Entrust you with little. But if we are faithful even in the little things, then the Lord will entrust to us much because He knows if we are faithful in little, then we would be faithful in in much. Okay. In other words, it's it's our character. It's who we are. Okay. It's what we have purpose in our hearts. It's not the circumstances that determine how you would react or respond. It's our character. Okay. As a matter of fact. It's the circumstance, most of the times, that reveal our true character. Tama? Although circumstances help develop character, pero most of the times, circumstances reveal who we really are. And 
True and faithful stewards. Okay? Faithfulness and stewardship would be tested in either circumstance. Whether you have little or whether you have much, it doesn't matter. Both In both, we will be tested if we are faithful in giving. So whether you have little or whether you have much, if you have determined in your heart to be faithful to the Lord in handling the blessings that were entrusted to you, kahit ano pa yan, malaki man yan o maliit, if you have purposed that in your heart, Lord, I will be faithful to you, then we will be good and faithful servants of the Lord. Right? If you're not faithful giving your tithes, Sabi mo, Lord, sa kanan pag medyo nag-promote na ako, tumaas na yung salary ko, kapag nadobli na yung sweldo ko, I would be faithful in giving my tithes. If you're not faithful now, if you have little, you will never be faithful when you have much. As a matter of fact, the more you would not be faithful, because kung maliit pa lang yan, nahihirapan na tayo, pag lumaki na yan, nako, sinasabi ko sa inyo, mas mahirap. Di ba? Pag maliit, minsan madaling mag magbigay eh. Pero pag medyo lumalaki na, ah, pagbili ko na ito ng sapatos sa ah. Ano ang dating eh? Pang chinelas lang nabibigay ko. Ngayon, pang sapatos na. Di ba? Iisipin mo na yun. Pero the reason why we can give more is because the Lord has given us much. Okay? So, if you're having a hard time being faithful now, na kung saan maliit pala yung ini-entra sa atin ng Panginoon, don't expect that you would be faithful when, the, when you have much. Okay? So, whatever our situation is, dapat maging matapat tayo. Amen? Amen. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, be faithful. Amen. How many of us are having a hard time budgeting our salary in a month? Sino sa atin yung second week pa lang pagkatawa ng sweldo? Oops. Wala na. Alright. Uh, parang, sino sa atin pa, Lord, nagpe-pray, Lord, please promote me. Please increase my salary. Okay. That's, is it wrong? No, it's good. You can ask the Lord. Okay? And uh, the Lord will uh, hear our prayers and in His will, He will answer our prayers, okay? But if you're having a hard time learning to budget your salary now, even if your salary increases, you will still have a hard time. You know why? Okay? Again, the problem is not really with the circumstance. It's with the character. Okay? Um, if you're having a hard time budgeting your salary, it probably means that you're living beyond your means. It's either you desire things uh, that is uh, probably beyond your ability or you want instant satisfaction. Okay? It has something to do with our attitude. It has something to do with, with our character. Okay? So if your salary is, two, say for example, 2,000 dirhams a month, and you're living 5,000 dirhams a month, a lifestyle that is, you know, 5,000 dirhams a month, then that's a big problem. Okay? That's not what? That's not good stewardship. Good stewardship means that we need to learn to live not beyond our means, but within our means. Sino sa inyo nakakita ng quotes ni Chinkita sa Facebook? Nakikita niya yun? Yung kapi-kapi now, pulubi later. <laughs> ano ba ba yun? Credit card now, shopping-shopping now, pulubi later. May nakita sa'yo, matutong magtiis, magtyaga, at maghintay, huwag upgrade now, pulubi later. Minsan, ganun tayo, no? upgrade now, pulubi later. Kahit walang cash, cash-cash. Okay? So don't be happy now and then what? Be broke and be sad later on and suffer later on. Okay? A piece of, of advice on credit cards 
Uh, alam siguro, alam na natin to, pero we are to be reminded every now and then that credit cards are good and it must be used for emergency purposes only. Okay? If you don't know how to handle your credit card well, it's better to cut it and throw it. It's better to have no credit cards at all. Marami tayong story na narinig dyan, and let's learn from those stories. Let's not learn from experience. Desire pa na may experience yun. Uh, yeah? Better to learn from, from people who tell us to uh, their bad experiences um, about this. Okay? So, uh, wag yung credit card now. Mas mabuti na yung uh, ano yun? tiis now. Happy ka naman. Okay? Kaysa sa, no, kaysa sa yung credit card now, go home later. Gusto niya? Our credit card now, jail yeah. later. <laughs> Mahirap yun, di ba? Ano mas gusto niya? Di ba? 1 Timothy 6.67 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and we cannot take anything out of, of the world. So learn to live within your means. Be faithful with what you have. The good thing about our God is that when He finds us faithful with little, He knows that He can entrust us with much. Therefore, he would bless us. God blesses faithful stewards. Amen? Amen? God blesses faithful stewards. So, let us uh, be good and faithful stewards. Faithfulness, brethren, is an issue of character. Although Christian character can be developed, okay, let's pray that by God's grace, through His power and through His mercy, that uh, He would develop that uh, character of faithfulness in us that we would resolve it in ourselves that we would be faithful stewards of the Lord whatever he would entrust to us whether it's little or whether it's much when you receive something a blessing maliit pa niya ng malaki unang-una na dapat natin gawin pasalamat tayo sa Panginoon Amen? Amen. Sino sa inyo pagkatagap ng sweldo tumitingan lang Lord, thank you. Hindi, pag ako sa endo, sili. Let's learn to be thankful in whatever God would entrust to us and let's strive to be faithful. Okay? So, faithfulness is a character issue. Sabi na, secondly, faithfulness is a charity issue or is a love issue. Okay? How do we develop that character of faithfulness well, of course, there's a process that needs to that's, that that is involved. Um, someone said that our spiritual disciplines, motives, obedience, and persevering faith will be the keys. Okay, but the bottom line will be dealing with another issue mentioned here in verse number thirteen, and that is the issue of charity or love. Okay, look at verse number thirteen, Luke number Luke chapter sixteen. Jesus Christ said, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. And this is the bottom line of when it comes to the issue of faithfulness. Okay? It's our love, our love, or our heart, our love for God. The Bible says that we are to guard our hearts because Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So the real issue in stewardship is our love for God. If I said if we love God, we will be loyal, we will be committed, we will be faithful to Him. We want to please Him, right? So, we would be good stewards. And true disciples of Christ are good stewards of Christ. Okay? Because we have that, <clears throat> that heart, that desire to please our Master. Now, as we close, there are a few things that I would like to mention here that we can find in this passage about love concerning our faithfulness. First of all, love is specific. Love is specific. 
Jesus Christ says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. Jesus Christ said, You cannot love what? God and money both at the same time and at the same level. You just cannot. You have, you will love one more than the other. Have you been in this kind of situation? Parang pipili kayo. Sino ba talaga ang pipili? Dalawa sila eh. Pero parang gusto ng puso ko dalawa eh. Yung parang, pero kailangan kong pumili, hindi pwedeng dalawa, isa lang. Dumaan ako dyan, maraming beses. Buti na lang, napili ko si Camille. Asan siya? Wala. Nakabidyo na lang. Okay. So, we have to make a decision, right? Hindi pwede yung dalawang boyfriend or dalawang girlfriend. O doon lang, yung dalawang asawa. Di ba? Hindi pwede. Dapat ano? Isa lang. Bakit? Kasi, pag binahal mong isang tao, dapat ano? Dapat buong puso. Hindi yung pwede yung you have hearted lang, okay? You have to choose one. Why? Because Jesus knows it. Jesus knows the truth, okay? You cannot love two or serve two masters at the same time. Why? It's either you would love the one and hate the other, okay? Now, the word hate there, hindi yung, ano, hindi naman yung ibig sabihin na Galit ka na, yung tipong, I would love God, ayoko na sa pera. Galit ako sa'yo. Kung galit ka, bigay mo na. <laughs> so, hindi naman ganun ha. Uh, uh, if you look into the Greek word of hate, in verse number 13, it's miseo, which can be translated, I hate, I detest, I love less, or I esteem less. According to uh, Help's word studies, that word properly means to detest, on a comparative basis, hence denounce to love someone or something less than someone or something. Okay. So if you if Jesus Christ says it's either you love God and hate the other, money, it means if you really love God, okay, you would love it doesn't mean that you would, you know, parang wala ka, kalimutan mo na magaya ka na sa pera. It means that you would love it less. You would value it less, but you would value God supremely above anything else. Isa lang ang pwede. At ang gusto ng Panginoon ay ano? Isa lang. Why? He is a jealous God. Kung ang girlfriend mo, boyfriend mo, wife, husband mo ay jealous, kapag may nakita kang may kasamang iba, yari ka. <laughs> Kaya ganun din si Lord, di ba? Kapag uh, jealous siya, kapag nakita niya may ibang Diyos na parang umaago ng pag-ibig natin from Him, yari tayo, ayaw ng Panginoon yan. Okay? So, you can, we cannot love both at the same level at the same time. You will definitely love someone or something more than the other. Okay? Uh, we cannot reason it out. Uh, hindi na tayo pwede mag-excuse pa. Alam ng Panginoon yan eh. Siya mismo nagsabi niyan eh. Di ba? Jesus Christ Himself said, we cannot serve both, love both, at the same time. Okay? Now, so, ano yung mas mahal natin? Mas mahal ba natin talaga ang Panginoon? Or mas mahal natin yung resources? How would we know? Well, who are we serving? Because the one we love will be the one we will serve, right? And that's the second thing that we can see here. Love is not just specific, but love is serving. Jesus Christ said you cannot serve God and money. So it is implied here that whom you love, you will what? Serve. Kung sino ang mas mahal natin, yun ang ating uh, and at the same time, that we serve, we also will love. Right? So, ano yan? Vice versa din yan. Someone said, love is the doorway through which the human soul passes from selfishness to service. 
Ang isang tao na selfish, once natuto siya magmahal, magiging selfless yan. Yeah? And naisipin niya, hindi na yung kanyang sarili, kundi yung kanyang minamahal. How can I serve the person I love better? Kaya dati, kung kumain yan, pagbibili sa kanya lang. Pero ngayon, pag may minamahal na, ang mag-iipon na yan, hindi na ako kakain. Makita lang kitang busog. Masaya na ako. Pero pag uwi, umiiyak-iyak. Bakit ba ganun? <laughs> Alright? So when you truly love someone, you will learn to be selfish and start rendering service to the one you love. The Greek word used for serve here in verse number number 13 is duleo, from dulos, which can be translated, I am a slave, okay? Or I am a subject to, I obey, or I am devoted. He has the idea of being a slave. So when you serve, sabi Jesus Christ, you cannot serve both God and money. You cannot be a slave to both. You have you have to choose. It means that you are renouncing all your personal ownership rights and you let yourself be governed by your master. So how do we know that we are serving money instead of serving God? How do we know that we are our love for God is less compared to our love for for money. Well, if we are governed by money, then it means that money has become our master. If life, if it seems that you are a slave, yung parang, dumating na ba sa point na gusto mong, may gusto kang gawing bagay, pero hindi mo magawa. Bakit? Kasi kailangan mong ano, Trabaho na magtrabaho na magtrabaho para kumita na kumita na kumita. Para, ano, ma-enjoy mo yung, yung, yung money. Okay? Um, John Piper said, We serve money by doing what is necessary so that money's power will be at our disposal for our good. That's the reason why money is very tempting because it gives us power. When you have more money, you have the power to buy more stuff, right? And sometimes, that power also includes power over people, right? Okay? And it, it means that the more you have money, the more power that you can have. That's why many people, even sad to say Christians, allow themselves to be slaves of money because they desire that power. But it's a false promise. It's a temporary power. It's not actually power, but it is enslaving us. Na kung saan money becomes the one governing our life, and it's not us anymore governing money. Dapat yun ang ano eh. Tayo dapat ang nag-govern sa money. Pero minsan nangyari, parang yung pera na ang nag-govern sa affairs ng buwan and I hope and pray that that would not happen to us. We should not be slaves of money because we are slaves of God. Amen? Amen? We are servants of God. We are servants of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we must love Him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with our, our mind, and with all of our sin. It means that we are to renounce all our personal ownership rights and allow God to govern our life. If God is no longer governing our life, then ibig sabihin, may iba na na nagtatake over. And when that happens, it means that has become the master of our life. We love God when God is governing the affairs of our life, and that also includes our money or our finances. If we love money more than God, then we will be slaves to it and serve it. But if we love God more than money, then we will be servants and slaves of God and serve Him with gladness and joy in our hearts. Yun yung maganda eh. Kapag we, if we chose to love God, we become slaves of God, but there's joy and peace and happiness. Right? When we love money, we become slaves to money. But you will never find peace. You will never find satisfaction. As a matter of fact, you would desire more and more and more. 
Kaya maraming tao ang gagawa, gagawin ng kahit na ano, kahit na masama. Di ba? Para lang. Kaya buti naging presidente natin si Duterte, no? At naging illegal nang nawawala. Okay? So, we must manage our resources. Okay? We, sabihin niyo sa katabi niyo, let us manage our resources. We must always be at the at the disposal of the Lord. What He says, we will do. Where He leads us, we will go. Sabi nga nila, whatever He feeds us, we will what? We would swallow. Okay. So the issue, the real issue in stewardship is faithfulness. And faithfulness is a character issue, but most of all, faithfulness is a charity issue, a love issue. And I hope and pray that we will be able to settle these issues in our life. So that our master will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I will close with this. John MacArthur said, possession of wealth is a gift from God given to us as a stewardship to be employed to demonstrate our character, our gospel concern for others, our desire to be good stewards and to receive an eternal reward and be pleasing to our Lord. Choosing to honor God with your money is to say, earthly wealth is not my master. Choosing to honor God with your money is to say, I want to take this stewardship and use what is His for His. Uh, choosing to honor God with your money is to say, I want to take this stewardship and use what is His for His world. Good and faithful stewardship is a choice. It's either we would choose to love God, honor God with our resources, or to dishonor God by choosing our resources more than God and loving our resources more than God. So which would you choose? God or money? Sabi nga nila ang money daw, wala namang God sa money, no? Sa dollars lang meron, in God we trust. Pero false God yun. Pero ang God, pag we, if we choose God, the Bible says He owns everything in this world, right? And someday, you know, if you study the book of Revelation, grabe yung promise ng Panginoon. Whatever Christ would receive, as an inheritance from God, we too will be co-heirs with Christ. Sabi naman. Diba? Grabe yun. So that's why we must and we will choose God. Amen? Amen. Sabi sa katipo, let us choose God. So choose to honor God with your resources by handling them and using them wisely for the glory of God. Choose to be a good and faithful steward. Choose to love God above all else and serve Him faithfully. Let us good and be faithful stewards. Amen? Amen? So as we close, as we close, let's reflect on these things. Number one, are you a faithful steward? Are you? Are we faithful stewards? How are we handling our resources? Were we entrusted with little? Are we faithful? Were we entrusted with much? Are we faithful with it? Okay. Are we living within our means? How's our testimony? Is it being affected by our stewardship in a negative way or in a positive way? Do you truly love God above all? Is the Lord the recipient of our utmost love? Are we serving Him? Do we value Him more than money or any other things or person in this world? Are we satisfied in God? Is He our joy? Do we desire to please and glorify God through our stewardship? Some thoughts to reflect upon. Have you learned something? Parang wala ka nakikita ng detect down notes. Anong natutunan nyo? Meron ba? Yes, amen. Hindi nga, isulat nyo. What have you learned today? I want you to write it down. I'll give you a minute. If you really learned something, write, write down what you learned. 
If you have a good memory, siguro, maalala niyo yung lahat ng pinag-usapan natin, hindi ba? Ang pinag-aralan natin. But write down what you learned. The lesson or lessons that you learned. Okay. Then secondly, think about this. Based on the lesson that you have learned, what is God asking you to do in response to that lesson or the, to that truth? It, remember, we are here to, we are studying God's Word so that we can be doers of God's Word. Okay? So it's not just knowing the truth, but responding to the truth. Now, based on the lesson that we have learned, ano sa tingin mo sa buhay mo ngayon ang gusto ipagawa sa iyo ng Panginoon? Kaha, last week, na prayer meeting, may nag-testimony, di ba? Uh, because of the sermon, God impressed to them, sabi niya, na uh, lahat ng blessings sa Panginoon, even yung bahay, So what they did was that they nilinis nila yung bahay nila. Kasi good stewardship yun eh, di ba? Na you take care of, in-entrust yun sa'yo ng Panginoon. So blessing yun. So because of that, they were able to obey and what? Respond to the Word of God. Right? So that's what we want. We want to obey the Word of God. So what is God telling you through the lesson that you have learned today? Meron ba? What do you think? Think about it. Reflect upon it. Write it down. 